So uh, what's that about making some money? Yeah, the rowing team. Your Honor, you get a part-time job included, cheap place to live. Eight-man crew is the most difficult team sport in the world. The average human body is just not meant for such things. Most of you will not be chosen. Beautiful speech, Coach. I have to say, the spot score was incredible, George. The, those over-the-head shots you had of the water and the rowing was unbelievable. And I just love the quiet moments with Joe and George, like when they're painting the boat and everything. Yeah. It was really cool. Um, but one thing I really found interesting about this was rowing is more poetry than sport. Mm -hmm. And there's that great moment where you break down the eight seats and how they all have to come in sync to find that flow state. And it reminded me of, of filmmaking, in a way, and, and finding that flow state within filmmaking. And I don't know how would you break down almost those eight seats in terms of how you make a film and kind of finding that flow state as one? Well, I mean, they're very similar sort of uh, disciplines, which is that, you know, each, per, each group individually has to perform, but they have to perform with one goal in mind, you know, and that's, I, I suppose if you're a director, that's probably, wouldn't you think when you're directing, it's probably one of the more important things is just to make sure that you're encouraging their skill but making sure that we're all trying to work at the same yeah pace. and that everything's of the same tone or pace or something yeah. that that the last common denominator is going to drag it drag everything down yeah it is true one thing i do love about filmmaking is living in a world like it, i get to go tr transport back to that time i never lived in that time obviously and then you go into your modern world when you're done filming for the day and you're in that space in the 30s for your production and then you go home at night in 2022 2023 uh in terms of that what perspective does it give you on your modern life uh when you play in that sandbox in those in the 30s and kind of what what perspective does that give you on your life well mostly i just drink through that period of time and it feels you know it feels fairly <laughs> simple you know if you're if you're drunk it really doesn't matter right you could tell that <laughs> yeah yeah i i tell you what i love is the you know thinking w watching the movie it really struck me particularly with the romance mm. this the patience you know mm. obviously patience doesn't play uh, uh, much of a role in our lives anymore with smartphones and everything we need and we can constantly search for desire and impulse and you know the the patience of just sitting with the task in, yes. in the old the old days yeah um is just so beautiful when that comes to dedication to a pursuit or a romance or anything you know yeah. i quite love that maybe we can roll as a team if you guys don't get yourselves figured out you're not racing at all the boys that boat fire but they didn't understand who we were. Let's show what was in this book. I don't believe what I'm seeing! You know, George, uh, 20 years ago, last year, you directed one of my favorite movies of all time, Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. Uh -oh. And I love that film. That was the first movie you directed. Obviously, yeah. you've gone on to direct incredible films uh, that I've loved over the years. But when you look back at that stage uh, of your career as a filmmaker, yeah. and that, what do you see as that as the director at that time and your evolution as a storyteller from that movie forward? I don't know, you know, I've, I've succeeded and failed, you know, at, at this process over the last 20 years. I really loved the idea of that film. I knew how to tell that story because I'd grown up around live television. Um, and so I had an interest in telling it. Um, and it's always easier. And, and then the next film I did was Good Night and Good Luck, which I also had an understanding oh. of that world. So part of it was always about trying to make sure I was working in a world that I understood. And then moving out from there is where you get into trouble sometimes, which is trying to work in films and stories that you don't understand. But that's how you yeah. grow. And, you know, part of the secret, and we were talking about this earlier, which plays back into the boys on the boat, is you don't learn anything from success, you learn from failures. And when, mm. you, when things don't work, that's a really, it tells you what you're, that's where you grow, if you, if you handle it well, if you take yeah. it well and understand. Yeah.